Tim Wilson, and I am here with the Nasty Boys, Big Ed and Ways, and you know what time it is. It's time for the show where we talk sports. It's time for the show where we talk football. It's time for the show where we talk schmack. You know what time it is? It's time for the showdown. Yo, yo, what up, though? I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson. I am here with uh, the Nasty Boys, Big Ed and Waze. What up, though, fellas? What's going on, Big Ed? What up, though? Not what much. Up, what up, though, Waze? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? So we got a great show lined up for you guys. Uh, it is uh, almost playoff time. It is playoff time in the real NFL. Fantasy football is over. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there was one matchup that had to be wrapped up this week that we can we can talk about that you guys can talk about. I wasn't I wasn't in there, um, but other than that, man, that is fantasy football is over for the year. Uh, we are done with that, so we are moving on, and uh, we're talking playoffs now. NFL playoffs. We're talking all just NFL this way this week. And yes, my voice is a little bit different because. I've been a little under the weather, but it's okay. You know, I'm going to get, going to get this checked out, going to get this taken care of, and uh, get back right for everybody. So, uh, fellas, what's going on with you? Big Ed, what's happening with you, man? Nothing much, just chilling, riding the victory. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talk to me about. Talk to me. What are we talking about, man? Man, in the, in the speed force. Oh, that was the last. That was the last living fantasy league, right? Yes, me and Waze battled it out, mm. but Big Brother came out on top by one point. Ooh, barely one point. <laughs> Ooh. Thank you, CD Lamb. <laughs> CD Lamb does it again. Yeah, CD Lamb strikes, strikes twice. Mm. So I go from bottom of <clears throat> every league I was in last year. To winning two chips this year. Oh, good for you, man. Big Ed got two chips this year. How many chips you get, uh, Ways? I got one, two, three. Three chips for Ways. And I think I've got three. Uh, I got, uh, I think I got three. I think I got three. I think I got three, three chips this year, too. One of Ways' chips was for the inaugural season. Of the smoke smoke session, yeah. tongue tied. Nice. Yeah. It, it, it's funny how that worked out. I win your league, and you go ahead, turn around, and win mine. <laughs> how about right? that? How about that, Mr. Vacation? And speaking of winning, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Michigan uh, has won the national championship. Uh, so we are recording this Tuesday. So last night was the national championship game, and U of M came out on top. So uh, let's go blue. First time in 26 years. I'm excited. I'm pumped. Love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. Since 1997, and uh, the star of the team that year was? Not Tom Brady. Desmond Howard, wasn't it? Charles Woodson. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> That was the Charles Woodson year when he won the Heisman over uh, uh, that big head boy, horse face, Peyton Manning. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he won the Heisman over Peyton Manning that year, and uh, and they won the national championship. But actually, another trivia: that was the year that spurred the talks of a finally the saying that we need a, a college football championship or college football playoff. 
so the BCS started after that year. You know why? Why is that? Because Michigan was actually co-champions that year in 97. They were co-champions because there was another undefeated team, and they stayed undefeated on one of the most miraculous plays I've ever seen in college football. And they won. They, they I mean, they stayed undefeated on a miraculous play, but they did stay undefeated, and they were co-champions. Can anybody name the other team that was co-championed with Michigan in the night? 19- 1997 college football year. Let's see. Miami was still good back then. Florida State was good back then. I'm going to say Miami. Oh, the Nebraska. He Googled it. It was Nebraska. I didn't Google it. because that, <laughs> that is when I fell in love. With Michigan. I was waiting for the big Ed to get it out because I knew the answer. <laughs> I didn't even it was that. Nebraska. Nebraska, I, Nebraska was a juggernaut back then. Yes, Nebraska was a juggernaut. Je- Nebraska was undefeated. But they had one game that they should have lost, and it was a touchdown pass to save them, and the guy missed the ball. And as he was rolling over, his foot kicked the ball back up in the air. Not intentionally, unintentionally, he was literally rolling. And his foot, the ball hit his foot, bounced back up into his arms, and he caught it, and they won that game. Or Michigan would have been the 97 champions without uh, dispute. But, But they never got to play each other. And that was the big hoopla that made them say, okay, it's time for a college football playoff. They should have been able to get, they should have been able to put that on the field. So, uh, yeah, that was a little Michigan trivia. Yeah, because that year was the same year the Gophers was doing actually pretty good. Yes. And here in Minnesota, I know at the school I was at, the teachers were just shoving the gophers down your throat left and right all football season. But, man, that maize and blue seemed so too appealing to me. And also, that was was still in the Big Big 12 back then. Right. They weren't part of the Big 10 yet. Correct. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> that said, Waze, where are we going? Where we go from here, sir? What do we do now? Well, we are appreciating uh, some football here. We got we got to give a shout out here to a couple coaches for the seasons they put together with the shit they walk right into coming in. Uh, both both of these guys first year, D'Amico Ryan's by far, I think is my candidate for coach of the year. Yeah, I agree. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, man, he came into. To say it was a shit show is to be nice, uh, and and he made he made chicken salad out of that chicken shit. Out of chicken shit, yes, sir. And then Antonio Pierce came in and just changed the Raiders overnight. He did. He did a great job. He did. Yes, he did. Now the question is: Will the Raiders keep him as a coach, or will they screw it up? Because they they can be some assholes. And, and, and... Right now, they have a hard on for Harbaugh. But I think they should keep him. No, Herbo ain't going to. Herbo ain't going to the Raiders. I, no, he ain't going to the Raiders. He'll stay in. He'll stay in. He'll stay in Michigan. Yeah, I and I agree with that. He's not leaving. He he's not leaving to the NFL for, except for the perfect job. It's going to take the perfect job for him to go, and San Diego might be it, and San Diego might go after him. Uh, he might. He may take that. Yeah. I when it comes to Antonio Pierce though. And the Raiders, I think they should keep. Him. And Absolutely. the reason I say that, Absolutely. Antonio Pierce brings the old school Raiders to a modern era. I think the Raiders would lose the locker room if they let him go. It, would that be the first time? No. No, it wouldn't. Sure. Yeah, the Raiders, the Raiders don't always make great decisions. No. Uh, is there any other coaches you guys can think of that 
didn't really get the attention they deserved, but did a pretty good job with what they had. Um, I think Cleveland Browns coach Stefanski. Stefanski deserves some bad props. He deserves some props. Losing Nick Chubb, losing three quarterbacks, and still putting together a hell of a run and making a playoff and um, actually got everybody scared. They're they, they a team that nobody really want to see in the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to say Stefanski deserves some love. Yeah, they beat both number one teams, didn't they? Yeah. They most certainly did. Yeah. The, the Cleveland Browns are the scary team in the playoffs this year. Other than the Ravens. Didn't the Steelers make the playoffs this year, too? They did. I think Mike Tomlin deserves a little bit of credit. Okay. Because he didn't have nothing to work with. Yeah, yeah, I can go with that. I can go with that. Tomlin deserves some love on that. Yeah, that, and he already stamped his uh, his entrance into the Hall of Fame with 17 great winning seasons. I agree. I agree. But this year was really challenging. They looked They looked out of it. Yeah, for a long I, time. For a while, I just did not see them come. I was like, they, we didn't think he was – leave alone make the playoffs – it was a stretch for him that, that he was going to have a winning season again. You thought the streak was over. Yeah. Right. And all of a sudden, they start putting together some wins. It's like, oh, holy shit. Lo and behold, here we go. Hmm. Not only did they have a winning season, but they in the playoffs. Somehow, some way, somehow. Two years in a row, they got into the playoffs by the skin of their teeth. Yeah. I, I don't think... Uh, I, yeah, I, so so yeah, I give him some props on that. I, I, I can see that one be good. That's not a bad call. Yeah. All right. Now there's some coaches that got let go. Black Monday was let yesterday. We got Mike Vrabel, who was let go actually today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frank Wright, which we all saw coming. Yeah. Ron Rivera, which another we saw coming, and <laughs> Arthur Smith. Uh, Falcons head coach. Falcons coach, yeah. Yep. He, he barely made it a couple hours off of the plane uh, after that game. And it looks like uh, Bilicek's still a possible cut. Yeah, I think I don't. I, I think Bilicek is going to be out. And there's a lot of talk. Yeah, maybe I think might maybe he'll go to the week. Raiders. Maybe he'll go to the Raiders. Yeah, I can see him going to the Raiders or the Falcons. And I see Vrabel going to the Patriots. I agree with that, too. Now, I don't know about the Panthers. We'll see where that goes. I, I don't know how to feel about that one yet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who wants that job. Yeah, that's a tough one. They're going to go after Ben Johnson again. So I don't expect them to make a move anytime soon. But they, they made a run at Ben Johnson last time, and Ben Johnson turned it down. I think they're going to make a run at him again. That's true. Yeah, I can see quite a few people get some calls. I know uh, Dan Quinn's also another option out there. Yeah, Dan Quinn is going to get a call from somebody. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, there's still talk to Brian Flores, but not a lot of real movement or call-ups. As I far think as Flores is going to land the job, too, though. Yeah. I, I think he'll stay good. here, but, yeah. <laughs> See, he'll go somewhere else. I think he'll land a, I think he'll land the head coaching job. But I, I, I'm, I'm curious if Ben Johnson is going to stick around for another year or if he's going to take, take, take one of those offers this time around. Last year, he just said, hey, we uh, we own a something. I don't want to leave right now. Right. Uh, the Bills offensive coordinator is going to be getting a lot of calls, too. Yeah. You know who's not getting any calls? Luke Getze. Eric freaking be enemy. Yeah. And he was someone that was talked about, too, previously a few weeks ago, too. And, yeah, no one's getting it, calling him. He's been consistently in the, in the talks, and now he made this move to Washington. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? If if nothing else, 
I could see him potentially ending up back in Kansas City as an offense coordinator. Mm-hmm. I could see that. If Washington lets him go, I could see Kansas City saying, come on back home, bro. We miss you. Or is that the direction <laughs> Washington goes is just to bring uh, the enemy up as head coach? I doubt it. No, I doubt it. I they got a whole new they got a whole new front office coming in, so Yeah. I don't see it. I hope so. I would like to see the enemy get a shot, but I don't think I don't see it. For some reason it's just something about him that's not He's too old. He's not getting that job, man. He's, He's just not getting for him. At this point, I would say, you know what, Eric? Just just go go and be the uh, a classic, high the uh, classic and the highest paid. Try to be the highest paid freaking offensive coordinator in the league, and just roll with it. Mm-hmm. I can agree. Um, you see, Ronald I know a franchise that can really him? use. Oh, I know a franchise that could really use the services. So I heard that conversation the other day. What what is the Bears going to do with that pick, or are they going to trade? A lot of people are starting to think they're going to trade Justin Fields, and I just don't think they should. But no. I get it. I I mean, I get the logic. It's it's moving the money. It's moving the money. That's, that's all it is. It ain't even about the player. It's about the fact that I'm resetting the clock on the rookie contract. If right. I, if I move Justin Fields and pick a, a pick a, a, a new quarterback. I reset the clock on a rookie contract on a quarterback. And that's all it is. That's the only thing that makes sense. Other than that, nothing else makes sense to me. To, to move, I would not do it. But a lot of people, it's a lot of noise about it now. Yeah. I'm not, I want them to keep Justin and trade that first pick. You can get, in this draft right here, you can get at least two or three more first round picks you get this year's first round from whoever you trade them to you get next year's first round and potentially one in 2026 plus you can get two or three day two picks but you know what their problem is with that you know what their problem is with that i know it sounds nice and dandy and it sounds tasty and it sounds good but you know what their problem is with that Hmm. carolina panthers the fact that the Carolina Panthers, according to the rest of the league, is looking at that trade last year as them getting hosed, nobody wants to get hosed for that first pick. Not yeah. like you. So you ain't getting a haul for that pick that you got last year. It's not happening. I don't know because um, if Minnesota's out there doing like they tried to do for Anthony Richardson, Minnesota might be that one team that would make that trade. Just so we could pick up Penix and make sure he's off that board. But why Penix? He he's not he may not be the top choice though. He may no. not be. No, but he's probably the best one to fit our system and that's kind of the direction our coaching staff's going right now. Mm-hmm. I I can see I mean, and I can also see a greater haul for Justin Fields. Because everybody's saying, Okay, so you're gonna jump off, you're gonna give away your whole team to get that first pick. And the second pick is the guy. And they didn't get they didn't have to give and the CJ Stroud. You went you gave up the whole farm for for Bryce Young and CJ Stroud was the guy. Yeah. Do I want to be that team? Or if you put Justin Fields out there, okay, now we're talking because I've got a proven commodity. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can get now I will give up the farm. Cause I know what I'm getting now. I'm not. I'm not taking a guess. Yeah, Minnesota wouldn't make that trade because we wouldn't want. But a lot of people will. Yeah, I can see that too. A lot of teams will make that move, and I don't think they would trade him to Minnesota anyway because they're in the division. Right. Division rival. Yeah, he ain't going to Minnesota. No, that's never (laughs) going to happen from either front. Yeah, but I could see teams looking at that. And saying, okay, now that's a move I would make, but I don't want to be Carolina. Yeah. I don't want to be Carolina. We're at that point in the season where, or the football year, where we're getting to where we have to 
start waiting for the playoffs to be over. That way we have a better idea of what's out there. Who's going to be looking for what as well? Because we're going to have all these coaches changing. Uh, people, plenty of coaches getting cut. Uh, GMs, everything being changed around, picked up, this and that. Once we look, know what the front office and that coaching staff looks like, we'll have a better idea on who's going to make what kind of moves. Yeah, the Lions, uh, both of their coordinators are were, were – Ben Johnson was an extremely hot name, and he's going to be an extremely hot name again. Aaron Glenn caught a little bit of action – He's going to probably catch more action this year, but I don't think he's going to be an extremely hot name. I think somebody may want to bring him in in the same as a lateral move as a defense coordinator, but I don't think he'd leave for that. But will Ben leave to be a head coach? I don't know. I don't know. He might. But last year, he just didn't want to. He, th- he said, yeah, we, we're doing something special. We got something special. We got something going. I want to stay for it. Will he do that again? I don't know. Right. That's it. All right. We got some end of the year things to talk about here. First up, what team do you think had the overall best draft this season? Houston. You're talking NFL? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, uh, Houston was a good one. Houston is a good call. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think who all got picked. Um, I think Detroit had a damn good draft. I was going to say Detroit's my pick for that. You got Jameer Gibbs and uh, Sam Laporta, two rookies who and brian branch and brian branch three rookies that made humongous impact to the point where their names are said enough where you thought they were veterans same thing in houston though yeah you got cj stroud will anderson jr and then you got tank Dell, and nico collins and nico uh, yeah uh, they didn't draft nico did they yeah i yeah. thought nico was the tr- came by trade i thought nico <laughs> played for the cowboys Oh, I thought they got Nico from the Cowboys. I have to find out now. But I thought that he was a rookie. Hmm. I, I thought I thought he came from the Cowboys. Um. Uh. Who else did they pick up? So Houston had a good draft. Yeah. Houston. Oh, never mind. He he was uh he was drafted in twenty twenty one by Houston. Oh, yeah, either way. They had two rookies. I can't remember who the other one. They had a good draft. And Detroit had a great draft. Uh, Detroit, I, I think Detroit was, I think they won it too. Detroit had a, had a really good draft too. Um, I don't know. I guess that's my two choices there. I, I, I would go with those two. I could go. I can agree. Uh, you got another one, bro? The Bears? No. I can't name any of the rookies. Okay, <laughs> I, 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 that's not even Darnell. Funny Darnell either. Wright, uh, uh, the the cornerback Stevenson, Roshan Johnson did a little bit, was was able to you know do some. Tyrell Smith proved uh, Tyrell Smith proved himself to be a decent fourth option at receiver. Uh, Practice squad. No, talking fourth and and and, and it went from three wins. To seven we're, talking, we're talking about uh Marcus. we're talking about Gibbs who just dropped a thousand yards and ten touchdowns, Laporta who just broke the record for rookie tight ends and uh I mean we talking we talking CJ Stroud who just I mean these these guys are putting up historic numbers. I'm not saying they, they had the best I'm not saying they had the best draft. We just wanted to mention they had a thing. good but they had a good draft. <laughs> The well, question Minnesota had a draft. good draft too. We the have best, the question was not who had a good draft. The question was who had the best draft. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna bring up the Bears. So, who do you think was the biggest difference maker player this year? 
for their t- respective teams. In regards to uh, for rookies, or just, uh, just in general, who came out, showed out to kind of help keep their squad in like afloat, essentially. Like for me, for this, I'd say Puka Nakua for the Rams. If we're talking rookies, I'm going to say Puka Nakua. But if we're not talking rookies, I'm going to say uh, Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. 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 Tyreek Hill with the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Sam Laporta. I think this question he just threw in, and it's and it's, and it's blending in with shit we're supposed to be talking about later. Right. <laughs> you can't be making up questions on the fly, man. When you this already... is a question here that I I do have written down, and I I personally couldn't come up with an answer off hat or off bat, but I was interested in your answers. Uh. Who's the best wide receiver quarterback combo this year? I'm going Steph and Puka. I'm going to go Tua and Tyreek. Oh. Yeah, I got to I gotta agree with uh, Big Ed here. Tua, Tua and Tyreek. Yeah, I could go with that. Yeah, I thought Tua had too many, too many turnovers. You know what I wanted, though? I wanted to see the continuation of C.J. Stroud and Tank Dell and see where that went throughout the season if Tank Dell was able to stay healthy. And C.J. I was just going to throw yeah. that one out there, Colin, too. I was C.J. and like, man, Collins is, is strong, though. They are. But, man, that connection between him and Dell, if that kept on the entirety of the season, we'd be yeah. talking more than just the few records that would have been broken. Right. Bro, I don't think... I uh, I can't imagine Tank Dell could have did any better than Nico Collins did in that last game of the season. Nico Collins was uncheckable. Mm. He was uncheckable. That boy is a monster. Mm. Houston, and then Houston gonna be dangerous. Here's another one, but they didn't come on until late in the season. Dak and CD Lamb. I agree. Here's one that's been there all season. Lamar Jackson and Zay Flowers. They came on late too, though. They, yeah. It was more mid season, but here in the beginning of the season. Zay they didn't come on. Zay didn't come on early. No. Zay did Zay uh, Lamar was really hitting other guys early. And then Zay Flowers got up, got his legs under him later. Mm-hmm. And then here's another and one I too. I thought about that one. Flacco and Amari Cooper. But that was only like two games though that they really hooked up. But that was because Amari Cooper got hurt. Damn, it, don't was it, <laughs> it, don't it don't matter why. <laughs> but it, but for those for those two games they did play together, he was they were balling out together. Yeah. It's two games. Yeah. I, I, but I do agree, bro. Is uh, they were balling. But it's two games. <laughs> but since we are on the topic of backup quarterbacks, who is the best, the backup quarterback of the year for you? Flacco. Flacco. Flacco, by far. Flacco. <laughs> there <laughs> plenty of options out there this year. <laughs> no. Or uh. Tommy DeVito. Not bad. Yeah, Tommy DeVito. But, uh, Not bad. Gardner Minshew wasn't bad. Yeah. Oh, man. Gardner Minshew actually showed up. And you know what? Indy, aren't, isn't Indy still in the playoffs? No. They get the boot. They got knocked out. Okay. So, yeah, either way, Gardner Minshew was in there, and they still basically damn near made Came it. down to that last game. It was win, win and end. And what I thought about, though, is in that game, while I was watching that game, the only thing I could think of is on the showdown, after the draft, we thought it was going to come down to Anthony Richardson and C.J. Stroud on who was going to be the better quarterback uh, this season. And I, it came down to if Richardson stayed healthy, that last game of the season would have been Anthony Richardson versus C.J. Stroud who gets into the playoffs their rookie year. 
Uh, yeah, it would have maybe, maybe, if he could have did what Gardner Minshew did this year. Yeah, but at the same time, he was playing a lot better than Gardner when he uh, was playing. He's just not smart when he when it comes to protecting himself. Yeah. Now here's a he tough. He hurt me in a few leagues this year. Yeah. Uh, here's a tougher one though. Comeback player of the year. Baker Mayfield. Oh shit! I didn't even have him on my list, and that's a good. He deserves a spot there. I'm gonna go with Baker too. Oh, everybody's giving the Flacco the love, but Baker's been doing it all year. Exactly. I gotta go Baker. How is he not in the conversation right now? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's talking Demar and Flacco. We forget about the fact that Baker came from literally nothing. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going flag. I'm going Baker. Yeah, he's on what his fourth team. So yeah, I think so. Yeah, starting Carolina went. To, uh, starting Cleveland went to Carolina, went to the Rams. To the Rams, and, and then Tampa. yeah, now Tampa Bay. That's four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like. I like it. I'm going Baker. I'm going with Baker. Shake and bake, baby. <laughs> All right, I got one more thing before we uh, get into our uh, predictions for the wild card week. Okay. Uh, who We're going to put together our personal all-pro team this year, starting with picking two quarterbacks, any conference. Who would you think? Who would you pick to represent the NFL uh, this year at quarterback? Two picks. Lamar Jackson and Brock Purdy. I got to, I don't go with the same two. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, no, I'm not going to go with Purdy. <laughs> you going with? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to go Lamar Jackson. You know what? Damn, I can't think of anyone I would put in front of Purdy. So, Purdy. I was trying to figure out. I was trying to justify putting Tua in front of Purdy, and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. So They're one and two for the MVP. Uh, no, one in three. The CMC is number two, as far as I'm concerned. I think I agree with that. But the way the league is run. I don't care how the league is it, run. It, it's Brock and Lamar, and then CMC after that, because it's a quarterback's league. Not necessarily. It's not a quarterback award. So I think I think CMC is is is, the, is number two behind Lamar. Yeah. And okay. That was the one thing that was kind of bothering me about uh, Purdy in the talk at number one is because Purdy wouldn't have done all that without CMC. I didn't have a problem with Purdy oh. being top dog for a while because his numbers said it. Mm -hmm. He was he was number one in virtually every quarterback category there is. Uh, but when they played Baltimore, he lost it. It was that that was that when they played Baltimore and he dropped four, five, four picks through four picks and CMC still had a game. I think that's when CMC passed up Purdy. Yeah. I can get with that. And that's definitely when Lamar passed up both of them. And speaking of CMC, two running backs to represent the NFL. I'm going to go with McCaffrey. And Kellen Williams. Ooh, okay. Tyron Williams, wasn't it? Tyron Williams. Yeah. Uh, I got to agree with McCaffrey. And I'm going to go Travis Etienne. Yeah, that's not a bad one. I got the top two, period. CMC, obvious. That's number one. But Raheem Mostert. Thought about that one too. I thought about that one too. Now we didn't he get hurt part of the year? He did. He did. Williams actually was number two, but but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going by yards. I mean, yeah, right, right. You true. Yeah, that's true. All right, three wide receivers. This is tough because there's too many wide receivers mm -hmm. that deserve to be on this list. 
That's why I expanded it. Somebody's got to get left off. I I mean, the pool is the pool is very strong on receivers. And it took me it I I've, this is the only list where I got scratch outs. I I, I wrote down scratch. No, I can't forget him. No, I should put him. No, I I've, I got a lot of scratch outs. But Tyreek is definitely in. Tyreek is more, is is definitely in. And these other two trust me it took me a lot to settle down and say these are the other two because there's a lot of names that i wanted to put in their place but i'm gonna go with Tariq. i'm gonna go with puka nakua and debo i like it okay i'm gonna go with Tariq, cd lamb and puka okay so we all agree, Tyreek Hill and Puka Nuku. But my number three would be DJ Moore. Okay. Oh, wow. When you got someone like Lamar or Brock Purdy throwing you the ball, I want my deep guy at Tyreek Hill. I want my uh, number two guy who's a beautiful route runner at Puka Nuku. And I want my deadliest slot cornerback I could possibly find. Which is Debo, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just shocked that you gave a bear some credit. <laughs> I, I'm a fo- I gotta understand this, bro. I Ain't love about, Minnesota Vikings, but I am a football fan first. It's about football, man. You, you, not <laughs> everybody got to put their heart in it like like you, big head. It's about I, just, just I'm a over. football fan first, and then I'm a Viking. Tell you who's missing from this list. Look, how, here's some names. Let's let's name some people that's missing from this list. That because CD was almost in my list, but I tell you some names that's missing from the list. Now, number one name that's right there, Stefan Diggs. Yeah. That he was, I mean, I had, I had read Nico Collins. Yep. I had both of them on there. I mean, it, it was some, it took some debating, some internal debating to get, to get Puka and Debo in there. Hell, Tank Dell too. I didn't have Tank Dell, but I did have Nico Collins. Hmm. See, I went back and was thinking about different receivers that that made the heavy hitters list throughout the year yeah yeah i got you let's see i was just going off of like i'm on ross st brown oh yep i'm looking overall impact man the leading receiver in touchdowns this season mike evans mike evans oh Yeah, it's some it's some it's some names, man. It's some names to get left off of this list. <laughs> right. It's some guys that deserve that deserve it. But you know what? It's only three spots. Only three spots. Tight ends. Two tight ends. My it was easy for me. I got Kelsey and Laporta. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Kittle and Laporta. I am going to go Kittle and Laporta as well because okay. he has been having the same issue as those Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers. And if he dropped me another goddamn ball in the playoffs, someone's going to have to kick his ass. <laughs> so, so ways is his personal due to fantasy football. Man, that man. I'm sitting there, I'm like, Travis Kelsey's killing it. And it's like, drop, 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 drop. I'm like, this motherfucker's losing points. What the fuck? All right. All right. Well, that's cool. So it's Kittle and Laporta for for overall, for for both of you guys. I got Kelsey and Laporta. Kickers. (laughs) Oh, man. I can't tell you a single kicker. (laughs) Uh, Tyrone Santos. Oh, yeah, Santos had a pretty decent year. Quizzle boy Jason Sanders. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. He won me a game this year. I know one that ain't on the list. Dick the kicker. Dick the kicker. <laughs> Dick the kicker. Golly. 
Right, David right, the Kicker is not on the list. Uh, very, very disappointing. Uh, so, I guess it's time to make those picks this week. Before we make the picks, All right? I got a message for somebody. Should I wait till after the picks? Sure. Okay, let's do the picks. <laughs> All right. I got a message for somebody, though, man. It's burning me up. All right, I got you. All right, first game this week would be Browns at the Texans uh, Saturday. Wow, Texans have a higher seed than the Browns. I forgot about that. Yeah, the Texans are division winners. Yeah. So they get the home team, home game. Uh, But I'm going with the Browns. I'm going to go Browns also. I'm going for the upset, the Texans. The upset would be the Browns. No, the home team is not the uh, is not the advantage team. You just all. said they had the higher seed, so they have the higher seed. But let's be okay, honest. then that makes them the that makes them the favorite. <laughs> the upset would be the Browns. <laughs> I'm going with the Texans, though. Uh, next up, Saturday night, Dolphins at the uh, Chiefs. I'm going with the chefs. <laughs> I'm going to go Dolphins. I'm going to go with my prediction coming true. The Chiefs are knocked off round one. This time it's just to the Dolphins, not the Ravens. The Dolphins win in a road game. Give me a break. Okay, next. <laughs> Steelers at the Bills. Sunday morning or afternoon. The Bills. I'm going to go Bills. I'm going to go with the Bills as well. Packers at the Cowboys. I'm going with the Packers. I'm going to go with the Cowgirls. I'm going to go with those Packers. They're on fire right now. Rams at the Lions. I'm going with the Lions. Me too. As am I. Eagles at the Bucks. Final game of Wild Card Week. Tampa Bay. I'm going to go with Tampa Bay also. And they going Buck Wild. Buck Carlton. <laughs> I didn't say it this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with those Bucks. So. <laughs> Well, that does it for us this week. There won't be a show next week. Uh, we got I got some appointments I'm going to be taking care of. So uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. I'll see you in a couple weeks, man. Uh, now I feel I should have did it before the picks because now I feel bad. Now, now it's like now it's out of place. I I'm, I should have did it when when I was feeling it. Damn, I just really got it. I really wanted to get it off my chest. <laughs> but you, you already said it, so you got to do it now. As well. But I, I just want to say this to uh, I'm I'm especially going to speak to one person in particular. Uh, y'all don't know him. Uh, I'm going to tag him. I'm going to make sure that he sees this. Um, and, but I'm not going to mention his name right now. But he is the typical. This is has been really frustrating me so first first and foremost i want to preface this by saying i'm not a lions fan all right and it's cheesy for me to say who my favorite team is so i'll say does anybody in this room know who my favorite team is 49ers okay i just wanted to be somebody else to say it so i'm not guy. looking cheesy and saying that what i'm saying so i'm not speaking as a lions fan but lions fans are really irking me certain ones and i get it because it's been so many times they this is the year this is the year and everything and they get let down so many times that they get to a point where instead of saying this is the year they figured out that if i say oh they're gonna lose that eventually i'm gonna be right and I and and it gave, they got gained some type of satisfaction from that, and because but this regime is different, and they can't accept it. They can't get over this. But if I say they're gonna lose, eventually I'm right. 
So they keep moving the goalposts as they keep being wrong. <laughs> and it's it's getting to be to at this point it's like stupid. They didn't won twelve freaking games and won a division. Oh well, if they don't win the playoff, well then they, it's, it's all a failure. Really? Do you make the pass that Matt Stafford is playing his first playoff game in Ford Field this weekend? Right. And it's because he don't play for the Lions. <laughs> I mean, 30 years was the last time they've been to the playoffs, right? No, it's 30 years since they had a home playoff game. Okay. Stafford got them to the playoffs once, but they, they didn't win. They never won a game. They lost to the Cowboys. Okay. In Dallas. And that was that. That's the only time. He never won a playoff game, and he never had a home playoff game. They didn't. They went. They literally went 6-2. and two, And then in the back half of the season, went 2-6. and six. That's what they literally did that, right? So I get why you, you you have this thing burning, but you know, this guy last year predicted they would win four games. He had a hashtag, no more than four. And everybody was saying, you sound stupid, right? And then they came out and they won nine games. Now, all of a sudden they didn't won 12 games and a division well, they ain't done nothing unless they win the playoff game. So when they win the playoffs, so when they, if they win this week, then what? Well, they ain't done nothing. They go to the Super Bowl. They win the Super Bowl. Oh, they got to win three. Stop moving. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> if you can't, it ain't even. And he talking about when, when I can't, I asked him about I, I mentioned it to him. And he going to say, oh, just because I don't conform with what everybody else said. This is your own fucking rules. You're the one said they're only going to win four games. This ain't about everybody conforming to everybody else. It's just common sense. But I get it. As a fan of a team that's been successful for a long time, has had a good organization for a long time, I get it. You're not used to success. And you've, you're used to saying that if I just bank on them losing, eventually they will, and I'll be right. You're wrong. I've seen good teams put together before. My favorite team has been putting good, good teams together I can tell when they're doing it right. Mm. And they've been doing it right for the past three years. Jump on the bandwagon, bro. It's your squad. It's really your squad. It really is. Just jump on. Just jump on. It's a good time to go. (laughs) It's a good time to go. Stop Stop moving the goalposts and let's let it ride. Enjoy what they got. Enjoy the fact that they didn't want 12, had 12 win season. Enjoy the fact that they didn't want a division. Something they ain't done in 40 freaking years, 30 years anyway. Something they ain't done in 30 years is an accomplishment. Enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Enjoy it and let it go. And if they win next week, great. Go ahead and root for them. It's okay. They've had a successful season already, even if they don't. But jump on. Jump on. That's all, man. It's okay. Motherfuckers need rehab around this bitch. <laughs> That's actually who I'm... Go ahead, man. I, I know it's not going to end up being San Francisco and, and Baltimore in the Super Bowl. But I'm actually hoping that it's going to be Detroit and Baltimore. I thought you were going to say Green Bay. I'd like to see Detroit and Cleveland. But I, I don't want... I, I would rather, quite frankly, I would rather see Detroit face Dallas than Green Bay. I don't think Detroit's going to beat Green Bay. I think they got a better chance beating Dallas. Yeah. And though, because what he's laughing at over there? Way he just break uh, himself up about something. This will be the third time that, that they face Green Bay this year, and those are always really tough games. So they lost the last so, time. Yep. They lost the last one, and I, I think uh, – I think they stand a better chance beating Dallas than beating Green Bay. But oh, yeah. at the same time, they got to get past the Rams first. Right. And that's it, man. I'm out of here. That's the showdown, man. I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson. On behalf of the, of the crew, the, the Nasty Boys, Big Ed and Ways, we are out of here. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. We're off next week, so we'll see you in two weeks, and we'll talk some football then. I'll holler at you. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace.